Hello friends, this video on cell part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now it is time for questions. So let us look at some of the questions and you can also get to know that whether you got the lesson well or not. So question number one. Indicate whether the following statements are true or false. Unicellular organisms have one celled body. Uni means one. So organisms which are made up of one cell. So that's what this statement says. So yes, this is true. Muscle cells are branched. So if you talk about uh, the different cells present inside the human body, you actually get a lot of variety. So when you talk about a nerve cell or a muscle cell, so yes, they are branched. So it is also true. The basic living unit of an organism is an organ. Absolutely not. That is what we have been learning in this lesson. That the basic living unit of an organism is a cell. And group of cells, they form tissues. And group of tissues will then form an organ. Therefore, the basic unit is cell. Amoeba has irregular shape. Yes, that is true because this is how an amoeba looks like and that too, its shape keep on changing. So when it wants to move from one place to another or when it wants to uh, take in food, so in such situations, its shape keeps on changing as well. So amoeba is made up of one cell and that cell keeps on changing its shape. It doesn't have a fixed shape. Question number two. Make a sketch of the human nerve cell what function do nerve cells perform? So if you look at a human nerve cell, which is also known as a neuron, what do they do? They carry impulses from brain to different body parts or from different body parts to the brain. So that's how brain coordinates with different parts of our body. For example, when you see something, for example, uh, let me take this example. Let us suppose you touch a surface which is very hot. What do you do? You immediately take your hand back. Why? Because your brain tells you that whatever you are holding right now is very hot. So just take your hand back. So that instruction to move but take your hand back comes from your brain. So all this transmission of impulses takes place through the nerve cells. So these nerve cells, how is their structure? They have got branched structure because these kind of branch structure helps in the process of transmission. So if you look at a nerve cell, so this part, they, they, it has got three main parts. So these branches here, they are called dendrites. Then you have the cell body, which is also known as cytum, cytum or cell body, whatever you call it. And then this one dendrite, which is so very long, this part is known as the axon. So these are the three important parts of nerve cell. Now, I am not going to talk about each of the parts right now because that will be left for your higher classes. So as you go to your higher classes, you study the same things but in little more detail. Question number three. Write short notes on the following. Cytoplasm and nucleus. So cytoplasm is the fluid which is present inside the cell enclosed by the plasma membrane. So cyto means cell, plasma comes from the plasma membrane. So it is the fluid enclosed by plasma membrane and it is present inside the cell. It has almost 80% water so it is less viscous. It is also called cytosol. All the organelles are embedded in the cytoplasm. So this fluid is cytoplasm. So you can see all the different organelles will be embedded here. It also contains dissolved nutrients and it can also dissolve the waste products and send them out of the cell. So it acts as a medium basically for transfer of materials. Next is nucleus. It is a spherical or oval structure present near the center of the cell. So this is nucleus. It is present in both plant and animal cells. Yes, of course. It is the control center of the cell because it controls many important activities of the cell. So one important activity where it takes part is the cell division. It plays a very important role in cell division. Secondly, it also helps in the movement of substances across the nucleus and the extra nuclear space. So the movement of substances across the nuclear membrane. So that also happens. That also is a function of the nucleus. 
It contains information for inheritance. Now, why kids look similar to their parents? Because they carry some traits from one generation to the next. And this information is the unit of inheritance is contained in DNA. And where is DNA present? DNA is present in the chromosomes. And where are chromosomes present? So chromosomes are present inside the nucleus. So that's how the transmission of characters from one generation to next happens. And that is why nucleus is so important. So you can see that if you look at a magnified image of the nucleus, so this is how it will look like. So here you have the chromatin threads which condense to form chromosome during cell division. So this is how chromosome looks like. And on this chromosome, you have structures called genes. And these genes contain DNA. And DNA is the genetic material. So this contains the information or the genetic information. Question number four. Which part of the cell contains organelles? Now all the organelles or components of the cell are embedded in the cytoplasm. So you see all these are different cell organelles. These are various cell organelles. So where do you see them? They are all suspended in the cytoplasm. So we can say cytoplasm contains the cell organelles. Question number five. Where are chromosomes found in a cell? State their function. So chromosomes, just now we were talking about that. So they are found inside the nucleus of a cell. What do they do? Their main function is during cell division because they contain the information for inheritance. So if you see here, these are the chromatin threads. So these threads, they contain DNA, RNA and proteins and the chromatin threads exist during the resting phase of the cell. That means when the cell is not dividing. But during the dividing phase, what happens is the same, these chromatin threads, they condense together to form these rod shaped structures called chromosomes and on these chromosomes are located gene which specify or, or which determine a particular trait of an animal of, or of a human being and these uh, on these genes are present DNA which is our genetic material so that's how we can see that chromosomes play a very important role at, for being carrier of inheritance. It plays an important role during cell division because when cell divides, a part of the chromosome is, is being passed on to the new cells which are being produced. And that is how the information is actually being carried forward from one generation to another. So whatever chromosome is present in the parent cell, a part of it is passed on to the next generation. So that's how some uh, traits or some genes are being passed on to the next generation. So they have similar traits. Now, how this exact process takes place that you will understand when we will learn about cell division. Question number six. Cells are the basic structural units of living organisms. Explain. So why do we say that? So when, whenever it comes to structural organization, just think of this concept that you have bricks which make up a building. So similarly, you have cells which make up an entire organism because cells group together to form tissues which in turn group together to form organs, organs group together to form organ systems and organ systems form the entire organism. So let us take this example. So you have many such cells inside your body. Now, some of them, all the cells do not perform the same function. So, a group of cells decided to perform a common function and those group of cells together formed the lung tissue. These many such tissues joined together to form these organs called lungs. Now, many such organs, now not only lungs, form the respiratory system but there are other organs also for example you have a pharynx you have uh, the windpipe you have you, in fact you have the trachea you have your nose you have the nasal cavity you have lungs bronchi bronchioles all these together form the respiratory system respiratory system alone cannot form the organism there are many such systems like circulatory system, digestive system, excretory system. So all these systems together form the entire organism. So what is the basic level? So everything started from cell. So that is why we say that cells are the basic structural unit of living organisms. 
Question number seven. Explain why chloroplasts are found only in plant cells. So chloroplasts contain chlorophyll, right? And chlorophyll helps in photosynthesis. Now, do animals perform photosynthesis? No. So plants perform photosynthesis, so they need chlorophyll. Because without that, they cannot perform photosynthesis. So that is why chloroplasts are present only in plant cells. These chloroplasts also impart green color to the plants because the chlorophyll pigment is green in color. Question number eight. So here we have a crossword. So here we have to complete this crossword looking at the clues which are given here. First, let us fill the across ones. So across is those which are in this direction. So number one, so here we have number one. This is necessary for photosynthesis. What do we need for photosynthesis? Only green plants do photosynthesis. And why are they green? Due to a green pigment called chlorophyll. So this is across, that means in this direction. We have to fill it. So let's fill it. So this is going to be chlorophyll. Number three. So where do we have number three? This is number three. Okay. Term for component present in the cytoplasm. So what are the cell components which are present in cytoplasm? Cell organelles, right. So it starts with O. So we are supposed to write here organelles. So these are organelles. Number six. So let's go to number six. This is here. The living substance in the cell. So the entire living substance inside the cell is called what? So inside the cell we have the fluid which is called cytoplasm. Other than cytoplasm what else do we have? The nucleus and the nucleus and the cytoplasm are together called protoplasm. So this is going to be protoplasm. And finally number 8. This is number 8. So units of inheritance present on the chromosomes. So which are the units of inheritance? What carries of the traits from one generation to another? Genes. So now we have completed the across ones. Let's look at down. So this will go in this direction. Number one. So here is number one. Green plastids. Which plastids are green in color? Chloroplasts. Right. So this is chloroplasts. Next is number two. This is number two. Formed by collection of tissues. Now we saw that cells form tissues. Tissues form organs. So this is going to be organ. Number four. So where is number four? This is it. It separates the contents of the cell from the surrounding medium. So the cell, this is the cell. And what separates the cell from surrounding medium? The cell membrane, right? So it is going to be membrane. Number five. Empty structure in the cytoplasm. What is an empty structure? It is nothing but a vacuole. The vacuole are big spaces inside which you lot have empty space, but it also contains a fluid. So this kind of structure is vacuole. So that's why it helps in storage. Number seven. A group of cells. The cells form tissues. So this is going to be tissue. So that's how we have completed the crossword. And I hope this would have been uh, helpful to you. So with this, we have reached towards the end of this lesson cell. And I hope that this would have helped you. There are quite a couple of things which I have just uh, given an overview. I have not gone into the detail. That's because uh, the details have been discussed in videos of higher classes like 11th and 12th. So in case you are really interested, you can refer those videos of higher classes. So I hope it helped you. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.